So, um, you know, I'm kind of curious thinking, what is it that I could contribute and give the most to right now? And what we could do is we could just plan the conversation and see where it went. But I think perhaps some of you are a little bit curious about why I would be standing here. Like, what gives me in any way the authority? Because I, I always get completely humbled by, really? Is anybody interested? Like, I started my business 13 years ago because I didn't want to work in corporate life. I clearly don't now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so shy. Uh, so, um, and, and, it, and it's school holidays, which is, and I've hung out for the day with my son, and he's 16, and whether he liked it or not, he was going to play with mum today, so it was mummy's day. And, uh, and, he, and when I said, oh, I have to go, I've got to do this, and he just looked at me as if to say, yeah, I know mum. You know, there's always been something on. So I did start my, my uh, life um, with Red Balloon because I, oh, hi, Topaz. I didn't realise everyone was going to be, oh, look. <laughs> um, so, and it's kind of embarrassing when all your friends are in the audience, you're going, really, do you want to hear this? Maybe we could move to something else that we haven't heard before. <laughs> so, um, you know, I did start uh, Red Balloon because I wanted to spend more time with my kids, but they're all grown up now. So now I have more choices about where I spend my time. And as Red Balloons evolved and continue to grow, it isn't what we ever, you know, it is far more than probably I ever imagined it to be. So people say, what do you think it was that made it be successful? The first thing that I think is quite interesting is what is success? Because success is actually an opinion and it's a personal view. And I'm sure your opinion of success might be quite different than Odette's or it might be different than Katie's. But, you know, we all have different viewpoints. And when we're starting on whatever journey we have, it would be interesting to take a conscious thought and think about what is success. Because in my 30s, success was to get through the day without having ruined anything. By the time, you know, because little kids is often a blur, not telling you anything, Katie, that you don't know very shortly. Um, and so just even getting through the day might be a feeling of success, that you move the game a little bit forward. So that would be one of my little suggestions is to think and consider what do you think success is. But the success that I feel that I've achieved is not because of the size of Red Balloon, the number of people we now have to impact, it's because of the choices we get to make of how we contribute to a bigger game. So many businesses we start out, like how many people come up to me and say, oh, I'm going to start this business, maybe really successful. And I go, oh, great, what does success mean? What does it look like? And they go, we're going to make a lot of money. And I go, oh great, money, that's highly inspiring for everybody around you. Um, I once worked in a professional services firm and uh, I remember the partner in charge who I reported to said, go on, off you go, go and make me some more money. And needless to say, I got my resignation very soon after that because that wasn't inspiring for me. What was inspiring for me was doing good work. And what would good work mean was contributing to others, like making the world a slightly better place. So if I um, think about what has created Red Balloon success, I'd really look at, the, at, at three things. One is a deep sense of purpose. Why do we do what we do every day? And that is at the very core of why we start businesses. Um, I, I thought I was starting Red Balloon because I wanted to spend time with my kids, but it wasn't that. That was the how we do business. We're a very flexible workplace. The why we're in business came from listening to customers. Very hard to listen to customers when you don't have any, so it might take a little while, because it did take two months and four days to get the first customer at Red Balloon. So, um, but in listening to customers, and um, every single person who's been on a Red Balloon experience gets a little email from us and it says, so how was it for you? And um, we read those. How novel. <laughs> how many times do you think you're filling in an online form and you, know, you go, oh, it's going nowhere? And then you get a phone call from somebody and then they go, Oh my goodness, somebody actually read it. I remember reading one way back in the beginning of time and it was from this man who said, um, I gave to my father for his 84th birthday a flight on a DC-3. And he was excited like a little boy going to a birthday party. When I got there, I chose to fly with him. Watching him try to pick up the flight attendants was truly embarrassing. <laughs> And he said, but on the way home, he shared with me that as a young man, he'd heard the first DC-3 flight on the radio. And today was the day he got to fulfill his dream. 
He said, my father is a very quiet man. He rarely speaks. I'll always remember today as one of the days he spoke. And then I got really absolutely clear about why we do what we do. We just want people to have more good times together. Because that's all we have, is those moments with the people who are important to us. Those shared experiences, good and bad, funny and sad, but they're all experiences, and that's what it is. So the first thing was that we always had this deep, deep sense of purpose of why what we do. And you know, the big scoreboard of how many people did we touch today? The second thing is obviously, you can't do it all on your own. And it became very quick, clear, very quickly, that I was very good at some things and not very good at others. And so you need to find the people who have strengths that are your non-strengths. Do you notice how I don't have weaknesses? I just have non-strengths. That's quite good, isn't it? Yeah. So non-strengths. So putting, obviously, the team around you. And it's interesting, I had a group of entrepreneurs come into Red Balloon recently. And they said, you know, what was the, you know, what's the answer? What's the number one thing? And I said, the, the number one thing is, as a leader, to look in the mirror and know what you're not good at. And be really honest with yourself. Because most of us kid ourselves that we can do everything, because we do do everything. But it doesn't mean that we're best at everything. And I said, the greatest hire I ever, ever did was our HR professional. And uh, at the time, we had a 64% staff turnover. That's a lot of people coming and going, coming and going. And I was very involved with the recruitment process. I did all the talking, yeah. Hi, do you want to come and work here? It's fabulous, you should join. It's really good. Forgetting that actually you need to ask a few questions as well along the way. And uh, you know, her challenge was simply, could we be a best workplace ever? Like consistently, because we're clearly not that now. So I can have all the intention as a leader, but not necessarily the skills or the ability to just get it done over and over again. So a leader's role is we set, the, we set the vision, we set the values, and we keep everybody absolutely aligned to our purpose. And if we can do that, but we have to bring people with us on our journey. And the mistake that I see most of is when a leader tries to do everything themselves. Because actually you're not a leader unless you've got followers. That's kind of how it works, that's what the definition of the term is. So you need people to follow you. And the only way you can have people who are going to share your vision is to get them to participate and be a part of it and do it. And the third piece that I think is why we continue to do what we do, part we know what we stand for, we know why we're there, is cause of our deep passion. Like we don't fake it till we make it. Like we really love what we do. Like love it over and over and over again. Every day I bound out of bed, can hardly wait to get started and wonder what's going to happen in the day. The same way as I did 13 years ago when I first started. I probably have a little more energy than I did then. I was a little bit on, well, I get more done now than I probably did before because I focus on the important rather than the urgent. In those early days of startup phase, it was all about rush, 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 rush to the urgent, 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 somebody called, I need to do what they said versus I need to put this in context of what I said I was gonna get done today and doing the, working on the important things. The foundations of the business, the critical things that need to get done. So if I was to put it down to three things, it would be purpose, people, and the passion. So I've left with you a little gift because this is what we're committed to, which is the little guide of happy. And you know, there's some really simple things of why happiness is important. We'll live longer. Do you know on average we're gonna to live to be about 100? It's good to know, isn't it? Only halfway there, that's great. <laughs> And the children that have been born now, Katie, are going to live to 150. So every generation, we're adding 20 years to our life cycle, which is life expectancy, which is interesting, isn't it? So we're going to live longer. There's obviously health benefits. But ultimately, it's our experience of life. And what we choose to do is very important. Well, one of the reasons why you see Red Balloon continually t keeping the conversation about happiness Happiness is one of our many emotions that we have as human beings. You know, we have guilt, we have anger, we have hatred, we have all sorts of things. We have sadness, we have grief, we have joy, we have ecstasy. We've got all these wonderful um, human emotions. But the thing that I'm challenged by personally is that every year in our Western culture is that depression goes on the up, not on the down. 
that more young people, more people suicide every year than they ever have before. It doesn't really make sense. And it, and, and it mostly is because people feel unbelievably alone for whatever reason that they can't share what's going on in their life and they end up feeling completely isolated. So sharing and being connected with others and my concern is that we're so busy connecting via our iPhones and our iPads and with a screen in front of us, we're completely disconnected. That's why I think it's wonderful to have such an occasion to bring people together in On Fire because we need to be together as human beings. It's the way we're constructed. So thank you. Thank you for having me. Have fun at your event. Cheers.